on behalf of International Nepali Literary Society Colorado, Colorado chapter, I welcome everyone to our author talk program. This is Vijay Dhakali speaking from Alberta, Canada. And uh, as uh, our new year has just started, I wish everyone happy new year 2078 become somewhat. And I wish everyone a wonderful, fulfilled and prosperous year ahead. Now, International Nepali Literate Literary Society Colorado chapter is inviting two well-known writers, Dr. Barbara Nimri Ajiz and Nilam Karki Niharika, along with all other valuable participants to our literary discussion program today. It is our great pleasure to meet Dr. Ajiz, a poet, an anthropologist, a researcher, and a journalist uh, who is uh, currently residing in USA, New York. And uh, she has done PhD in research uh, uh, from University of uh, uh, London. And uh, in addition to that, she has uh, written uh, so many books and then served our country for literature, history, and culture. And most recently, she has published uh, um, Maya and uh, Durga Devi, a rebel woman of Nepal in 2020. And uh, today she is going to talk about this program. And uh, this book is uh, now has launched in Amazon and uh, it's available in um, both in Kindle version and hard, hardcover as well. So another surprise here with us today is uh, Nilam Karki Niharika who has won the Modern Puraskar on the uh, book uh, Novel uh, Yogmaya. She has also discussed to uh, Dr. Barbara Aziz while writing this uh, book. And uh, uh, recently she is uh, going to launch a new book called uh, Draupadi of Shays, who is, uh, it's coming soon. So now I would like to uh, invite Vice President of uh, International Nepa Nepali Literary Society Colorado chapter, Ms. Samjana Achare, and uh, I will. Uh, I would request her to speak a uh, few words about Dr. Barbara Ajiz. Thank you so much, program host Bijaya Dakal. Good afternoon, all ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to talk about great uh, anthrop anthropologist, journalist, and writer Barbara Nimri. I'm going to uh, read uh, about her bio. Barbara Nimri Ajiz. Our Barbara, as she has known in Nepal, has been involved with the people of Sankhwasava and Bhojpur for over 40 years. In, in 1980, she stopped one night, uh, one night at Manakamana Kuti on the shore of the Arun River. Uh, there began her discovery of some remarkable Nepali, Nepali ladies. In some respects, she never left there. Since today, we are celebrating the release of a new book, her second about rebel women of Nepal, Yogamaya and Durga Devi. Barbara arrived in Nepal in 1969, a doctoral student at the University of London. She intended to write about Serpa people, but eventually, uh, she, set, uh, she settled in the village above Salrari in Salukumbu, a community of Tibetan villagers displaced from their homes on the north side of Mount Everest. She remained, re she remained in there for 11 full months, never returning to Kathmandu during that entire research period. She amazed reflecting on that time but she used it well. Become a fluent Tibetan speaker, the first American to ta uh, take up a colloquial Tibetan. Tibetan frontier families reprinted uh, by Vajra books, Kathmandu resulted from her PhD thesis. She continued to write about Tibet Tibetan society and history for another 10 years publishing widely before shedding out of the Arun River Valley and her research romance with Yogmaya and Durga Devi. Barbara considers herself fortunate to have found among the children of Khadwari's uh, Shurya Bahadur Shrestha's family a willing and capable assistant 
the 21 year old Dharmastrasta walked down to Manakamana to help Barbara during her work there between 1981 and 1985. It was Dharma who is uh, who in 1981 told her about the poet Parijat who Barbara eventually met. They became close friends. Barbara visits Nepal almost annually for research and journalistic reporting. Only in 2013 or 2000. Uh, 15 by chance in Kathmandu, she met Dharma's rest again. They have since been in regular touch. Barbara was born in Canada. She left there after college and for most of her life. When not working in Asia, lives in New York. You can find her writing and photographs from her tie in Nepal and much more about her on her new website, www barbaranimdi.com. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Achari, for talking about Barbara. Now, I would like to request Mr. Dharmaras Resta, a vice president of Jana Samparka Samiti Central Committee, who helped Dr. Aziz to conduct her research work in Nepal during early 80s. Uh, I would like to invite him to say a few words about Barbara. Mr. Dharmaraj Resta. Are you Mr. Sir Shunyu? Ajur. Ajur. Namaskar. Yaharu shopela. Namaskar. Dhanavad. Thank you. Um, Vishesh gari kana aaj ko program ka aaj na karne saathi arlay meru tarvote dhanavad. Vakari purvakta. समझना आचार्य जी बटा बारबरा अजीज को बारे बटा वहाँ ले लिखने वाले को आधार बटा कई पूरा भनिशक ने वाले कुछ मत से यहाँ आजा खाली नेपाली बटा मात्रे बन चु 1981 तेरो वहाँ संग मेरो सर्दनली खात बारी यहाँ बैठ बाए को थियो रतेश बेला मा बिक्रम संबत 1988 मा जून बेला चाहे राणा शासन काले योग माया बनने महिला ले ये उटा महिला अधिकार को सशक्ति करन को निम्ति बहुत लोग काम करनु बाकी थी और वहाँ लाई धेरे चोटी पनी तत्कालीन राणा कालीन अवस्था का सरकार ली वहाँ लाई एरेस्ट पनी करे और वहाँ ले ये उटा बहुत पुरमा बाहा योग्य करने पूरा करनु बाकी थी तेरे लाई पनी आश्वासन पार नु बो प लगभग और सटी जाना आरु व्यक्ति आरु शंघा चीन शर्श लागर वहाँ ले आत्मा समाधि करने से गर्नु बो जिनसे अरुण नदी मा वहाँ को तेरा वर्ष को बच्चा ला लिए रा जानु गया थी तेज तेज बारे मा महिले ये दा कदा सुने कुछ ही रपसी करीब दो हजार पैंतीस साल की रहला बार बार आजी सह मेरो बेड़गाड़ बाहर जून से ठाउमा ऐले पनी के मजुआ बटा फर मजुआ भन्ने ठाउमा से युग माया जिले तेही बटा से सबे आपने भक्ति अलग लिए रचे हुए आले समाधि करने बात हो र आत्मदाह करें चाहे आत्मसमर्पण करें चाहे वहाँ से अरुण नदी माहम पालन बात हो तेज तेज बारे में ती महिला योगी महिला आरु बटा से आमले के कुरारु सुनें नाइनटीन एटी फाइव तेरे फरके राउन वो रा करीब दो तीन महीना लगाया रा काम करा करने बो राय इस बारे में मायले धेरे ही जानकारी दिनों बंदा पनी हुआ आपको किताब में धेरे लिखे कुछ हो रा नीलम जिले पन तेज बारे में योग में संबंध में धेरे कुरहारु अनुसंधान कर रहे थे वहाँ ले देख सकने बो कुछ हो र योटे कुरो के वन देखी बार बरा नमी अजीज ले इस तो अमेरिका जो इस तो विकसित ठाउं बटा गए रा क्यों मन का मनामा टॉपरी मा की भक्ति अर्ले दिए को भात बयान बेल की ने दूंचा खाने भात ने पहले तरीका ले खाए रा पंद्रह दिन संभव मशहूर चीन संगे बसे रा मिले काम करे आते हों तेज पश्चात फेरी पनी वहाँ 
र त्यसै सन्दर्भमा उहाँले महिलाहरुको अरु कोही महिलाहरु पनि त्यस्ता कोही छन् कि भन्ने कुरा गर्नु हुँदा खेरि पारिजातको नाम मैले लिदिया थिए र पछि उहाँले पारिजात जीलाई पनि भेटेर र पारिजातको बहिनी सुकन्या वाइबासँग पनि उहाँले चाहिँ धेरै सत्संगत गर्नु भएको छ अहिले पनि उहाँसँग राम्रो सम्पर्क छ र त्यस पश्चात मैले दुर्गा देवी पनि एउटा त्यस क्षेत्रमा शंकुवा सभाको खाँदबारी एरियामा बहुत राम्रो महिला अधिकारको लागि लडेकी थिइन् उनी उनको सन्तान छैन तर उनीलाई चाहिँ उनको घरबाट र समाजबाट विद्वी भएपछि चाहिँ उहाँलाई धेरै टर्चर भएको कारणले गर्दाखेरि मैले उहाँको नाम पनि लिएको थिएँ बारबरा अजिजीलाई र उहाँले पनि उक्त दुर्गा देवी घिमिरे हुनु उनको पुरा नाम चाहिँ म सानो छँदाखेरि उहाँको अलिअलि मैले सम्झना गर्न सक्छु तर बाइस तेइस सालतिरको कुरो हो उहाँलाई उहाँकै परिवारबाट हत्या गर्ने पनि प्रयत्न भएको थियो दाजुभाइ उहाँको देवर जेठाजुबाट त्यो सन्दर्भमा पनि उहाँले अनुसन्धान गर्नुभएको छ क्यार र म धेरै कुरो के भनौँ ए यति नै हो कि म मेरो भनाइ चाहिँ बारबरा अजिजीले महिला नेपालमा भएको महिला सशक्तिकरण र महिला अधिकारको लागि लड्ने महिलाहरूको बारेमा जुन पुस्तक लेखिदिनु भएको छ त्यसमा म उहाँलाई पूर्ण रूपले धन्यवाद दिन चाहन्छु त्यसै सन्दर्भमा हाम्रो निलम निहारिका जीले पनि उहाँले यहाँ बसी बसीकन पनि धेरै योगमाया सम्बन्धी काम गर्नु भएर चाहिँ उहाँले मदत पुरस्कार समेत पनि विजय गर्नुभएको छ र अहिले शंखुवा सभा र भोजपुर जिल्लाका राजनीतिज्ञहरू र समाजसेवीहरू मिलेर योगमाया आयुर्वेदिक विश्वविद्यालय स्थापना गर्ने पहल पनि भइरहेको यहाँहरू सबैलाई जानकारी गराउन चाहन्छु र मैले यति भन्दै म बारबरा अजिजीलाई पूर्ण रूपले म धन्यवाद दिन दिँदै मेरो दुई शब्द टुङ्गाउँछु हस् नमस्कार यहाँहरू सबैलाई धन्यवाद थ्याङ्क यू मिस्टर श्रेष्ठ फर युअर एडिसनल इन्फर्मेसन एन्ड एक्सप्लेनिङ अल अबाउट द ग्रेट कन्ट्रिब्युसन अफ बारबरा ड्युरिङ द टाइम सो नाउ फाइनली आई वुड लाइक टु इन्भाइट आवर स्पेसल गेस्ट स्पिकर राइटर Dr. Barbara Nimri Ajiz, who is an anthropologist, journalist, and writer herself and researcher, to talk about her book, Yogmaya and Durga Devi, Rebel Woman of Nepal. Yes, Dr. Ajiz. Thank you. Can you hear me? Am I on music? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Barbara. Thank you so much to Dharma Srestra for introducing me to the Colorado uh, International Literary Society. and uh, to help uh, me know you and to uh, Raju Sautali for arranging this program today and for all of you for joining us. Well, um, your, partic- your participation in the Colorado family, as I call them, uh, is, is very important because of course, many Bhojpuri and Sankwa Sabha people are there. So I feel that uh, your location, that location in my research uh, was so important. So I have this very deep affection for the place and so many fond memories. And in fact, I was able to return to uh, Kadbari and uh, went to Marwa uh, nearby, also went to Manakamona in uh, late, 2019. Um, so, of course, so much has changed there. Uh, most of all, I found the roar of the Aron River was missing in my memory of staying at uh, Manakamona. It was the sound of the river that had so much influence on me in imagining what had happened there 40 years ago. And now in 2019, uh, the river has changed its course and it has uh, gone far to the Arun Pari um, so that the, uh, the beach outside Mana Kamana is very wide and we can no longer actually hear the roar of the Arun. Now to come to uh, the two women, the subjects of my many years of work, I can of course talk uh, a very long time about them, but 
I'll try to keep it short so that we can have a discussion about them. I find that questions in any case will allow me to elaborate. Uh, both women were from Bhojpur, Yogamaya born in 1868 and Durga Devi in 1918. So while they overlapped to a degree, they did not really associate with each other. Uh, Yogamaya, as you likely know, left this world in 1940 with the Jal Samadhi, with many of her followers at Majwa Basi. Uh, this is well known now, but at the time of my research, uh, not discussed at all. Uh, Durga Devi passed away in 1973, just seven years before my arrival. But I concentrated much of my work on Yogmaya and uh, she has captured uh, the imagination of Nepalis to a degree that so much more is known about her. Uh, so I have never met either woman, uh, but the women residents of Manakamona, uh, the Bhaktini, were followers and also beneficiaries of her. They knew her well. They knew both women well. Both of these women I find extraordinary, whether we're talking about Nepal, rural Nepal, uh, the city, whether we're talking about American women or European women or other Asian women, they were both daring, exceptional women for their time. Uh, and I consider them worthy of the title of uh, rebel or heroine and should both should be elevated to prominency in Nepali history. Whereas Yogmaya was a revolutionary who boldly and openly challenged the Rana dictator the, the priests and Brahmanism and challenged women's restricted rights. Uh, her bold actions included appeals to the palace and her vision and teachings are expressed through what we have today remaining very, very important document from her, the Sarvat Yogvani. And uh, I have, I can't, I can't leave it far from my, from my arm here, right beside my desk. I mean, this is the uh, book that Mata uh, gave me after my second visit. Before this second visit to Monica Mona, I did not know that there were printed uh, copies of Yogmaya's Hazurbani. And this made a terrific difference because, I mean, you see, it's, it's falling apart, but I love it so much. I don't know what to do with it, but I keep it near me. And because this was written and it was clear uh, that the history I collected was not simply the memories of what some people considered old women waiting to die, at the Ghat at Manakamona. Uh, these were written uh, poems, utterances that, that uh, represent her teachings. Now, Durga Devi was a very different leader and a rebel. She was self-educated. We're talking about 1930s, 1940s. And she was also familiar with the courts. We think, I well, I, I'm quite sure it was through working with her father and he may have taught her to read and write. And she applied these skills in court procedure as well as, as her knowledge of Nepali um, in the courts to call for justice. Following, she did not try to change the laws of Nepal which had been established by the Muluki Ain. She, uh, only wanted to see that those laws where they did protect people's rights were fulfilled. She spent a lifetime not only winning her own land rights as a widow, and that was with the very important alliance of her remarkable Sasu. Uh, and she 
uh, won those rights in Marwa. She was married from Palakot, her mighty guard, to uh, Marwa near um, Kadbari. And she fought not only for her own land rights, but for other women and for a violated child who was impregnated by a local official. She also fought for her own Buari's rights because her brother left uh, the Buari as a widow early on. She fought for her rights and she also notoriously and very dramatically exposed corruption by officials and by the merchants. So I call Durga Devi an anti-corruption and anti uh, or a property rights advocate, but also a humanitarian. She purchased 60 ropani of land at, on the shore of the Aran, which is now we call Manakamona. And that land she gave over to the Bhaktini who were, who'd been, uh, survivors or followers of Yogamaya. She also left an endowment for the baby of the young girl in Kadbari who had been violated and so much more. Now I use this book in particular, much of the book, uh, the biographies of the two women and the uh, semi-fictional biographies of three Nepalis, which I created from my own experience traveling through Nepal in the 1970s, <clears throat> um, they remain largely the same, although I accommodate them, uh, those chapters, I edit them to reflect the work of others, uh, Nepali scholars, uh, a considerable number, by considerable I mean about six or seven very good Nepali scholars who have taken up uh, research on Yogamaya, but not Durga Devi. Durga Devi remains um, somehow neglected. <laughs> so I use uh, this uh, book, uh, while I include several edited chapters from the first book, which was published by Tribhavan University, Sinas at Tribhavan, I use this book to highlight Durga Devi's character and her achievements adding my comments uh, uh, about her and following my visit to Marwa where I met members of the Gimeri family who remembered her well. Um, uh, much has been um, learned and, and much interest has been generated of course uh, by uh, Yogamaya, the novel by Neelam Karki Neharika which uh, as you know, won the Madan Paraskar. Niharika took my work and that of others to launch her own research and spoke to many of the people uh, she met in Bhojpur and Sankwa Sabha. And so while it's a novel, it is also, I think, a very important resource for ongoing research about uh, Yogamaya. Uh, before, um, I also want to mention two other Nepalis, both from uh, well, uh, Depeche Neopane, who did his PhD, as far as I know, still the only PhD on Yogamaya from Tribhuvan University. And he is from uh, um, Nepal Danda, the birthplace also of Yogamaya. And I also want to mention the very important research by Matrika Timsina. Uh, he is based, and I think he's from Kadbari and he's based there and both of them continue to do important research. In fact, Matrika Timsina, who I'm regularly in touch with, I think is writing actually a history of Sankwa Sabha, but his work on the Yogabani, his uh, research on the language of the Yogabani, uh, which has some, as he pointed out to me, it has some very particular language used in the Aran Valley area. So uh, the Yogabani are very important for not only their poetic value, but for other uh, qualities. Now, I think, um, I, I think I'll think i end there, if you don't mind, and go into um, uh, the questions and answers. Uh, as uh, Dharma mentioned, though, um, I did meet Parizat after my second visit 
uh, to the Aran River Valley. And that was because I, I said, you know, I was so, um, even though I was hearing the, the oral transmission of Yogbani, I said to Dharma, you know, because I felt the power. These were politically very, very powerful. And this was during the Rana period. Uh, I felt the power of, of these uh, words from Yogamaya. And I asked him, I said, is there anyone else in Nepal who writes this kind of provocative, daring, um, aggressive, you could say, um, poetry? And he said, yes. He said, I don't know how he knew her, but he said, uh, there's a woman in, in, in Nepal and uh, young people go through the villages singing her songs and reciting her poetry. And you can find her in Kathmandu. So again, after my second visit to uh, Sankwa Sabha, I went uh, to Kathmandu and started the search for Parizad. And she embraced, uh, because I took this, I was able to take this with me. And so she could read the Yogabani herself. And she said, this, this is my ancestor. She was so excited uh, by the quality of Yogamaya's writing as well as her achievements and her vision and her, her profound political uh, work. And she uh, embraced me, uh, we became friends and she supported me in so many ways because again in Kathmandu outside uh, Kadbari and Bhojpur, no one was speaking at all about uh, Yogamaya. So the fact that Parizad um, endorsed her and began to talk about her and urged other people to do research was very, very important for me. There were, well, Janaklal Sharma, I did meet Janaklal Sharma, archeologist in Nepal at the time. He is now, of course, no more, but he said yes. Uh, and he had an article about Yogamaya, but nothing about her political work. And I did meet him and again had endorsement uh, at a time when nobody would talk about her. And this was very important to keep me going. So I'll end there and welcome your remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ajiz, for detail, detailed information about Yogamaya and her work and your work with her. And now I would like to invite uh, our uh, guest participant here to ask their questions if they have any. Um, I will ask uh, Mr. Uh, Ramesh Gurung, a philanthropist and INLS member. Uh, Ramesh Gurung, please, if you have any question. Ramistha, mute moment, sir, Ramistha. Is that okay now? Are you Yes, we, Are you we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, thanks for letting me the first to ask the question because I have to go back to work and you know, you can see I'm working and uh, I just use my car to join your very, very excellent program. Uh, first, I would like to thank Iron uh, Chapter Colorado for bringing this type of uh, program. And uh, most probably, if I am right, uh, this is the first time that we call some author, writers, and everything, and talk about their books and everything. And also, this time, backed by Dharma Sreshta, we call Dharma Dai, who, who had a very important role while creating this book and everything. Uh, before I go into the, some questions, I would like to uh, recall some of the memories here about Barbara. Uh, the first time my daughter, most probably Barbara knows my daughter, Dr. Anova, she was visiting me when she was uh, in Yale University and she visited me during the Christmas and she talked about you, Barbara, and the book she was carrying with her. Uh, but she took back the book. I didn't get a chance to read the book, but, <laughs> but she was telling some of the story that you wrote some uh, very historical, I mean, the facts about the Arun Valley and everything, those Jal Samadhi of more than 30 people and everything, you my everything. So I was very much excited. Uh, but anyway, thanks for being with us today. 
and uh, I'm not going to take a long time, but in short, I would like to tell you that those rebellion omens, Yogmaya and the Ghimere, actually they played their vital role even during the regime of Ranas and everything. Fortunately, we were not there in, during the Rana regimes. Definitely my parents, my grandparents, they were there. They faced all kind of uh, separation, discrimination, everything. But even those days were denied by Yogmaya. So, and you pick her name, and not only Yogmaya, you pick another lady who plays such a big role yeah, in course of empowerment of the woman power in Nepal. And it's a very iconic action. And you did a good job. I really appreciate your your book, your time, your your everything. Is Even today you are giving us the time talking about your mind, everything, which is unforgettable. It's, it's excellent. We actually, like I said, my daughter told me, then I knew only do that. Most of the people in Nepal, they don't know about Yogmaya and the Gujimire and everything. But you, you did a, another phase of revolution by writing the book. And the big message to all the Nepalese. So I really thank you. Uh, and after that, I just have one question. I have two questions. The first thing, I know you visited there uh, as an anthropologist uh, in course of some other kind of research and everything. My first question is that, at what point do you, like, do you realize that you should write something about your Maya? That's my first question. And the second question is that, have you ever been approached by any person uh, and talk about translating your book into Nepalese language or any other language? Thank you very much, Barbara. So you're Anubha's father. Yes, good to see okay. you. Okay, good, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know Anubha quite well through Manaslu too, but- um, Yeah, you're right. That's right. Um, and uh, I know Anubha's mother as well. Oh. <laughs> uh, so now you're the remaining member of the family. Um, wonderful to, to have you join us. Yes, so, sir, thank you. Uh, yes, uh, we are, um, I won't say anything right now, um, but I'm working with a Nepali scholar and writer, and we are planning a uh, publication of uh, the chapter on Yogamaya in particular with new contributions from other people. So we're negotiating that right now. And uh, we've had that chapter translated to Nepali and uh, that's, that's definitely uh, in the, whatever you call it, in the channel. Uh, the first question uh, regarding why I pursued this story, I was inspired. I was inspired personally by the Yogbani. I mean, they just grabbed me. You know, I, I had never read uh, anything in English or French, I read a bit of French, like it and coming and living with the women who knew her, they believed so deeply in her in a very beautiful way that the way they spoke about her inspired me and Dharma will affirm that. I mean, Dharma mm -hmm. whose family was not at all receptive to Yogamaya, but when Dharma came and lived with us uh, at Manakamona with the Bhaktini, he also fell in love with Yogmaya. I mean, I don't think I'm saying that too strongly because he became very devoted and was able to convey his love of Yogamaya to the Bhaktini and they trusted him and, and working with him because I depended on him for translations and just the general atmosphere. And he was very honest. He didn't dismiss what we were being told, whereas a lot of other people did, including some other members of his family <laughs> and other people I spoke to in Kadbari, they just said, oh, she was a communist, she was uh, a prostitute, because of course she encouraged the marriage of, uh, of uh, widows 
and many people came and lived in her center at Majwabesi, and that was considered uh, uh, illegal and outrageous and blasphemous. So Dharma was also, I think, very, very much uh, in inspired. And I had been up to that point, non-political. You know, most academics, they don't mess with politics. I mean, at that time, even after the Ranas left, the, I was there during the monarchy and anthropologists kept far away from anything about related to government. And um, I was one of those anthropologists who just did my job, you know, did my research. You go to a village, you come back, you do your PhD and then you say goodbye. But I, uh, I, I realized because it took me 10 years from the first research in 1980 to the first um, presentation of my uh, research in a international conference it took 10 years before I wrote the first article and published it. And uh, uh, I could not grasp the significance of Yogamaya's work until I studied Nepali politics and learned about the condition of Nepal during the Rana period and even during the monarchy. And much of my education came from my friend Manjula Giri and from Parizat. A Parizat, as you know, was an active communist. The only reason she wasn't in jail was because of her health conditions. And through her, I met many of the early Maoists, uh, her brother-in-law, um, anyway, her brother-in-law, I forget his name, Nirmal, I think, uh, Nirmal Lama, right, uh, or Nima Lama. And uh, while I didn't really mix with them, I imbibed their politics and they were not shouting against uh, the monarchy, but they were educating me regarding conditions of life. And so I had to learn politics of Nepal, but also I, if you're studying a people's life, you also uh, educate yourself about class divisions, about um, inequalities and so forth. And so I became political. I became a political animal, as I have said, and I have never looked back. <laughs> And I've become very political here in the United States, an activist. And also uh, I had to leave anthropology, not because they pushed me out, but because I didn't believe in academic uh, um, occupations. Uh, and I feel academics, excuse me if any of you are professors, but I feel it's a very conservative community, very conservative academics are very careful about uh, the countries they work in, even uh, in America. And um, so I became a journalist. I switched from anthropology to journalism where I had more scope to be critical of government or human rights issues, women's issues. So that's, that kind of summarizes uh, the effect yes, of yeah. Maya on me. Yes, yeah. Yeah, at the end, I just want to add one more sentence, Steve. Uh, uh, I really appreciate your work and hats up to you. And you wrote a book on Yogmaya and the Vyadivik and everything. Let's take it that it's not just a book, but this book will be considered as their footprints and they are walking within the Nepalese society, not only within the society, but within the whole world, sending a message that we need a Woman empowerment, there should be no any discrimination, there should be no any separation with any whatever the race, sex, uh, originality, and everything. Your book will be considered, once again, I'm telling you, your book will be considered as their footprints. Thank you very much, and hats up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gurung, for sharing your memories and putting your questions forward to Barbara. And uh, 
thank you, Barbara, for your response. And uh, now we know how Barbara, an anthropologist, turned to a journalist. So the next person I'm calling here today is uh, Mr. Vijay Raz Sharma, who is a philanthropist and INLS life member. He is uh, going to ask a few questions to Barbara, if he has any. Mr. Dr. Vijay Raz Sharma. Sorry, uh, I was unmuted here. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Yeah. Dr. Aziz, we are indeed very delighted. Actually, we are honored to have you here with us um, and for granting us this opportunity to learn about the life and works of two women heroes of yesteryears who still may inspire young uh, social activists. Uh, I have a few questions actually, but I want to start with only two first. And maybe if time permits and we have another round of questions, I may come up with the uh, few other questions. So I have uh, one question each related to Yogamaya and then related to Durga Devi. Uh, regarding Yogamaya, I'm going to use a word that you have not used that word in your book. Uh, and this word often carries negative connotations in the Western society not so in Nepalese society. My question is, may we call Yogamaya's following a cult? Uh, so that's one question regarding Yogamaya. Regarding Durga Devi, at one, uh, you already, in today's discussion, you have already pointed out that you have become political journalists rather than archeologists now, I'm sorry, anthropologist. At one point in the book, you mentioned how you chose to abandon the standard protocols of anthropology, and you chose rather to immerse yourself in the story of Durga Devi. Uh, there are two sub questions related to this. Did this change in method of exploration in any way help or hinder your scholarly or scholastic quality of your work from anthropology, um, anthropological perspective? And would you recommend such change to young anthropologists? So I will wait for your answer. Let me see, uh, make sure my, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, okay. Yes, both excellent questions. All these uh, questions are excellent. On the, on the issue of cult, um, I don't know what uh, the connotation is in Nepali. You said it's different in Nepali than in maybe Western context. In the Western context, it is very negative. And I, if, so, I only have the Western context in my head and I can't, I can't conceive of, of it as a Western cult because I learned about it from the Bhaktini. And these were all women, 50, 60, 70, several of them were 80 years old. And they spoke with a great deal of love about, uh, of, Yogmaya, and they, some of them even regretted that they didn't jump with her. Um, it's hard for me to imagine the atmosphere in that area during her life. I and some other scholars who have thought about this we estimate there could have been about 2,000 followers. Uh, 
altogether, which is a lot. And uh, she also recruited people because she went to Kathmandu several times and she recruited some Kathmandu families, families from Biratnagar. Uh, I think it's a question for philosophers. Um, you don't see in her Yogabani, which are the, you can say the transmission, there is no feeling of a, of, I mean, it was an anti, it, it was a nonviolent movement. But there are other movements in the world which have been nonviolent and also called cults, right? So I think it's a good question and I, I can't answer it, but I reject the term in English. Now with the Nepali term, you said is different. Would you use that term? Yeah, in Nepali we call pant or sampraday, which uh, for the lack of words, it, it means a sect within uh -huh. the broader religion. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as uh, my impression is, we don't have any negative connotation as such. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of being a mainstream, it is still uh, attached to the mainstream, but they have some specific followings. Uh, I think uh, Neelam Niharika may have something to say on that subject. So uh, either she might do so later or we can find this in her book. But I believe from what I know about Yogamaya, especially from the Bani, that she became fearless and becoming fearless is not an easy thing for any of us, right? I mean, right. when you don't fear death, when, when you lose your attachment to your body, which I really believe she did, um, you rise above and you can face anything. She had to face the Rana ruler. I mean, that's, you know, this was a time of dictatorship and you may know the troops came in when she made her first declaration of Agni Samadhi some months before the Jal Samadhi. She made that declaration and they all, uh, 240 of her followers signed this paper. And she, she, had, she had not tried to overthrow the government. She asked for accommodation. She, she had some terms and she asked for essentially rights and acknowledgement. And after uh, she sent that letter with the signatures of her people and they, they brought the wood to the shore of the Aran ready for the uh, Agni Samadhi and um, the troops moved in from I think Dankuta or Dharan, I think Dankuta, and they rounded them up. They rounded a lot of them up and um, put them in jail. The men were put in one jail, in uh, maybe Dankuta and the women in Dingla, I think. And they sang the Bani from jail. And ultimately she agreed that she would not uh, challenge the ruler anymore and after that, of course, secretly, then they made the Jal Samadhi. So this is a, a discussion. I mean, there are, because some children went with their parents into the river. Right. And that is a cult-like kind of action. Actually, that's what hit me. Yes. I thought I asked this question to you. Yes, yes. I mean, it's, it's hard. But then why did the government ban her completely. Uh, they must have considered her words and her mission dangerous. She was already gone, but there was a complete ban on anything associated with her. And people went into hiding and everyone, you know, they stopped, of course. They, even when I was there in 1980, the priest who was kind of in charge of Monica Monacuti, he told the women not to to sing Bani. He, re he banned them from singing the Bani. 
and they were reciting it to me. He didn't like it at all. He said, don't talk about yoga maya to this foreigner. So, as, yes. As I gather from your book, uh, it was not spreading her religious beliefs, rather reforming the legal uh, and re the religious discriminatory systems. So it was more broader than what generally a cult. Yes. Right, yes. And I think it's very interesting that today, uh, as you may know, there's uh, their funds have been given for all kinds of monuments and shrines. Uh, at Majwa Basi and other places to honor Yogamaya and the stamp. There was a stamp, official Nepali stamp, and there's the new Yogamaya University. Huge amounts of money have been given for this. But as others have told me, uh, Rajendra uh, Tapa in Kadbari, who knows this situation well, others have affirmed that now Yogamaya is being presented as a spiritual figure and her political work is completely neglected uh, in discussions about her and uh, the people in Bhojpur and even in maybe in Sankwa Sabha, they are interested in creating uh, religious sites for tourism. Religious tourism is now a big growing thing in Nepal and all over the world. And uh, they may have their own material interests in, in building these shrines to Yogamaya. As somebody has said, she is now a brand. And, but that's fine. But I'm sorry that even maybe in the university, they may not teach her political mission and her political vision and her political um, insights and recommendations. So this is a long discussion. <laughs> so uh, let me just move to the methodology. Yes, uh, anthropology uh, is not a discipline to, to help write biographies. There are a few anthropologists who have written biographies, but very few. And at a certain point, I realized I could not write this story without writing a biography. So I had to throw out my methodology. That's why it took me 10 years for the, normally, you know, I'll write an article after maybe one year of research, but <laughs> I, I couldn't write this biography, be, partly to, as I said, because I needed to have a better political awareness. And then second, because I didn't know how to write biography. It's not easy, you know, and this was a, person I'd never met, the two women, I'd never met them. How am I going to write a biography? I mean, it had to be a historical biography. So that took a long time, but I'm very glad that I struggled with this because I became a better writer. And I also, I'm satisfied with the two biographies in this new book. They are largely the same as the 2001 book published by Tribhuvan University. Uh, I feel that they still carry the spirit that I wanted. Uh, but uh, I also, uh, my writing has become more personal. I put a little more of my own personal story into this book. And I think that's part of also writing a biography. I feel you can't write a biography of someone without to some degree writing about yourself. It, it, either explicitly or in a subtle way. So that, and now I can't read anthropology. You know, people give me books, they're, they write anthropology, but I can't read it. It's, they're awful, awful academic writing. I feel sorry for students. <laughs> it was your PhD thesis, I, be, I believe. Yes. We start with this research or your PhD thesis. No, my PhD thesis was from work in Nepal, working with Tibetans in Solukumbu. Okay. And that was published also. I see. My concern was whether you'd shifting your methodology uh, prevented you from getting the PhD thesis requirement right. it, fulfilled, you know. It probably would have. 
It mm -hmm. probably would have. We're talking about 1970s. Maybe right. today, I don't know. I, I don't know if today professors would, it'd be interesting, interesting question. Do you teach? Yeah, I used to be a professor, now I'm retired. Right, so it's a question for professors. Would they, would they accept a biography? Right. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. So thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sharma and Dr. Ajiz for your very valuable discussion. We came to know lots of information from your discussion. Now, the next person I'm going to invite is uh, Mr. Padam Bishwakarma, the Vice President of uh, Board of Trustee, INLS, uh, to ask questions, if he has any. Uh, thank you, Vijayji, um, for this opportunity. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank um, to INLS uh, Colorado chapter <laughs> for organizing such a great program. Uh, good to see you, Barbara, here. Um, I had uh, your number from Dharmadai, but uh, I was going to call you, but uh, I never had a chance to give you a call. And uh, uh, we spoke, um, me and Dharmadai, we spoke about your program, how we can do in Colorado. Um, eventually, we oh, had a, such you. a great program today. Finally, we get success. Um, at the same time, um, um, same time, I'd like to congratulate uh, Nilam Karki and uh, Nihari Kaji. Uh, for her great book, Yogmaya, uh, which has um, um, uh, which has uh, more details about the Yogmaya. And uh, she is a great writer and um, we love her so much because uh, she the only one person got the Madan Puraskar from diaspora from out of the Nepal. Um, that's why she's the uh, diasporic writer, I would like to say. And uh, uh, congratulations for Harika for her upcoming book too. Um, I I love to her um, read her books. Uh, congratulations again. Now, <clears throat> Barbara, uh, first of all, uh, a big congratulations for you uh, to write uh, this book, um, Yogma and Durga Devi. Uh, this is not a um, um, thank you for your contribution. Really, really appreciate. Um, because of I would like to say because of uh, your writing. Uh, your inspiration, your um, uh, research, um, a lot of um, works going on right now about the yoga maya and you brought out about the yoga maya back in like uh, when we did not uh, born that time is back in like uh, 50s, <laughs> 50s so long time ago. Um, and uh, also you did a uh, great work that time. I don't know how you visit the remote place in Nepal um, village communities, uh, that's so difficult, you know, how you work. Um, uh, it was hard to find the plane and it takes a so long time to get there and, you know, uh, how to find the place in a remote village to stay, you know, and the food is so difficult. Um, that time you take a uh, big risks, big challenges uh, to, to investigate, to find the new, um, new concept, new thing about the Yogmaya. Really, really great. Uh, it's not only the you write; it's our um, outcome is it as uh, for Nepali community, Nepali society, uh, as a whole in the in the Nepali context right now. And that's why we really um, like to say uh, thank you and congratulations uh, for your outcome for your book writing. Here, um, I like I have two questions. Um, uh, one is. Um, um, one is, um, as I am the student of uh, sociology too, uh, I like to ask you the one question related to the sociological uh, things. How you uh, uh, relate uh, those uh, two rebel women's uh, contribution on socio-political and uh, cultural aspect of um, uh, Nepal's uh, current situations? Uh, one question. And, um, uh, another is uh, since the yogma is so much uh, popular, uh, so much famous, uh, Nilam Karki wrote the book, and there are so many activities going on in the, about the yogma. Um, they have the foundation. Uh, Dharmadai said uh, there is going to be the established the yogma university, and uh, I was um, invited in to join the one of the program 
which was Yog Maya Foundation organized like like five six months ago. Uh, I found so much information about the Yog Maya's activities in there, um, and there is a lot of research activities and studies, book publications, a lot of things going on about the Yog Maya. But at the same time, uh, Durga Devi has uh, contributed um, uh, somehow um, in the same context to the Yog Maya. But uh, Durga Devi is not a famous, uh, is not a popular same like, uh, like Yog Maya. Uh, what do you think uh, was the reason or she's uh, not famous as much as um, uh, but, uh, Yog Maya? What do you think? That's my uh, two questions. And uh, thank you and thank you for having you in this program. Thank you very much. Uh to take the last question first, which is a big issue. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know why Durga Devi's work was more secular and very practical and very concrete. And to me, she is uh, extraordinary to, she had courage, she self-educated, she worked in the courts, uh, she, challenged the merchants, the corruption. She faced her dewar and mm -hmm. won her land from them. She took them to court. She made alliance with her sasu. And we know that many women are not in alliance with their sasu. It's very important relationship. And Durga Devi made this alliance with her sasu and was able to uh, win her land and overcome many other obstacles that were placed before her. In fact, I'm, I feel I made a mistake not trying to learn much more about her sasu. Uh, um, and given that gender rights, they call gender rights, women's rights, it's a big issue in Nepal. It's an industry. Yeah. All these NGOs and books about women's rights, women are a big big business in Nepal now with NGOs. And I mean, rightly so to some degree, but all these NGOs helping women and trying to build institutions for Nepali women have not responded to my stories about her. The public has been very um, um, receptive to Yogmaya, of course, um, and now we go back to Neelam Niharika's work because while my work did uh, bring uh, Yogmaya's life and work to a limited public, uh, the novel Yogmaya by Neelam Niharika really projected it into Nepali consciousness, you can say. Um, and, I, and it's interesting that a novelist did far more work to bring that character, of, a real character, uh, into Nepali consciousness than all of the other researchers. And, um, you know, we have to think about that. How come a novelist can do such a powerful job in writing about a historical character compared to us who are scientists? Um, so I hope <laughs> Neela Niharika will write a novel about Durga Devi. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> I um, was going to ask you the same thing, like uh, at the same time, is there any good uh, scope of the work of the Durga Devi to write uh, like, uh, like a Yogmaya or like this book? Or what do you think this will be the- I think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, uh, and, and young women these days are writing a lot. Women in general, I think in Nepal, are writing an awful lot in Nepali and in English. There are many writing writers groups, uh, writers associations in Nepal. And, um, and of course you have the activism of Nepali women against uh, the rape and murder of young women. So. Uh, Nepali women are very mobilized. And then in addition, as I say, you have the NGOs. So I 
concentrate this book, uh, the first, the new chapters on highlighting Durga Devi and asking this question, why has she been, she, she hasn't inspired Nepali women. Neither has, uh, apart from, uh, apart from Parizad and Neelam Niharika, Yogamaya has not inspired Nepali women. Most of the research is done by Nepali men. How come? I mean, not, I mean, I'm glad they're doing it, but uh, why have uh, Nepali women not taken up uh, this issue? Although again, I think uh, Neharika's novel uh, has made a, a difference there. Uh, and, and there was a theater performance of her novel, as you may know, two years ago. Uh, so I'm hoping that um, somehow, if not my writing, somebody else <laughs> can bring uh, Durga Devi to life. And uh, in a way that she is used. She, you know, she is a model of a Nepali woman that can be useful for us to realize our capacity. If she could do it, why can't we? Because so much remains to be done, whether we're talking about United States or Nepal or anywhere else. And I had a good discussion with um, Tar Taralal Sharma, Shrestra, Taralal Shrestra, he's an assistant professor of English at Tribhuvan. We had a Zoom talk and he focused on the rebel, the word, the concept of rebel and going from Sahasi, the daring, to revolutionary. And I think um, uh, today the idea of a rebel is being reevaluated and I think um, these two women, especially Durga Devi, because Yogamaya was uh, in a way a revolutionary. Durga Devi's activities were more, as I said, practical. And as one scholar told me, he said, oh, she's typical. She's typical. Women do this all the time. Well, they don't do it. They face the same issues, whether it was 1930 or today. But to say no, to your father or your sasu or your brother and to say, I want this, this is my goal. And to go to the courts. I know many women who, they can't go to the courts to fight for their land. It's not easy, even with the new constitution. And you have the quota for women in the constitution and they're losing these. these. It's very difficult to be a, uh, um, even in your family and in the university or in your office, it's very difficult for women to be a rebel simply by saying no, and simply by saying, I want this and I'm going to get it. Simply by saying, I want my land and going after going to the courts because you know, your brothers or your brother-in-law uh, even your brothers will tell you, no, 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 we'll take care of you. You don't need to go to the, nobody wants to go to the courts with their sister or their sister-in-law. So to do things like that uh, require this spirit of rebellion. And I think here in America, we need models. We need stories of women and men who did things that were uh, very courageous and but were doable. We're doable. We're not talking about a cult here, right? We're talking about reshaping your life. And I, I have been a rebel since I was young uh, and I paid a price. You pay a price in many ways. Uh, and especially women, I think, pay a greater price. And it has to do with caste as well for those you know who are not in high caste or not wealthy, the struggle uh, is is greater, and you have to be more of a rebel. And all of you live in the United States, and you know the struggle of African Americans here, four hundred years, and we're still learning about rebel African Americans and what it took and what it takes every day, uh, and 
I think for African Americans, uh, there that rebellion goes on, and the model we need models. So we need Durga Devi as a model to show other young women that you can do it. I think there was another part of your question, but that's already pretty long answer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara, for my comments and questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bishokarma and uh, Dr. Ajiz for your analytical discussion. And uh, thank you, Barbara, for explaining the practical aspects of uh, Nepalese society in comparison to other countries. So the next person I would like to invite is uh, Bijay Dev, Mr. Bijay Dev Adhikari, Treasurer INLS uh, Colorado Chapter, to ask uh, if you have any questions. Mr. Bijay Dev Adhikari. You hear me? Thank you. Yeah. So it's a great pleasure to be here in this special program, Dr. Barbara. So, from my side, I do have one question. So could you tell, please tell us something about your relationship with Dr. Harka Guru and Parijat and how they influenced your life or your thinking process? Thank you. I'll try to be a, a little bit brief. Um, Carrie's that I already mentioned. Uh, I had never, in fact, when I, Dharma mentioned her name and I didn't know, he just said, she's a woman who writes poetry and people go around the hills singing her songs. I didn't know anything about her. I didn't know she was a communist or sick or whatever. So I went down to Kathmandu, by down, I mean, from Kadbar, from Kadbari down to, and I started to look for her. And I asked the professors I knew, because I was associated as a scholar with the university. Oh, we don't know where she is. She's sick. I know. I know we can't find her. And I was staying at um, a small hotel and a little boy heard me, I guess, asking about her. He said, she's my auntie. I'll take you to her. And she lived in a small cottage in Maypee. Uh, near Naya Bazaar, and he took me to her. And I had the text of the Yogani with me, fortunately. And I knew that she did not like anthropologists because we are part of the imperial system that uh, I, I, you probably know. I mean, anthropologists write about other people as if the West is the only kind of leader and we become the authorities on everybody else. And so she didn't like anthropologists, but for some reason she agreed to meet me and um, she embraced me, as I said, because of Yogamaya, not for any other reason, but we, you know, we felt comfortable with each other. And I began to visit her at her home and I saw people arriving from jail, we're talking about 1982, people looking for a place to sleep for the night. I mean, her home was open. She was there for everyone and she was fearless. Many of her colleagues, of course, were in jail uh, or in fugitives outside the country, including her brother-in-law, the Maoist leader. And she was not in jail because she had a disease that made it very difficult for her to move around. And she showed me by her lifestyle and the way she helped people who came to her and the way she spoke about people, um, she taught me a new political sensibility that I never had. I started to care about Nepal as a country, whereas before I just cared about my research. Do you know what I mean? And uh, she befriended me and she introduced me to people and she was a hard drinker, as you may know. So we used to have some parties and 
and she was also a lot of fun. Um, and she wrote in English and she, we, we, we maintained a correspondence and now I'm still in very close touch with her sister, Sukanya Waiba, who you may know. Mm -hmm. And we're deep friends. And I speak to Sukanya regularly and I visit her as often as I can. Sukanya also has helped educate me on issues of politics in Nepal. Um, so that is a long association. And I'm forever grateful because there she taught me communism or so socialism without ever mentioning Marx or any book. She mm -hmm. taught me politics um, and she never denounced, she never said very bad things about the king or whatever, uh, but she taught me to care and to understand the basic injustices in Nepal. As for Dr. Guru, uh, I met him um, in London, first time, I was just setting out for Nepal for my PhD, 1968. And uh, um, so when I arrived in Nepal, I went to see him at his office. I think uh, he was the head of a planning commission at that time. And uh, uh, I then I didn't have a lot of association with him, but I remember one thing he told me when I was just going to the hills. I think it was when I arrived in Kathmandu and I was just leaving to go to Solukumbu. And I said, what should I bring with me? He said, oh, you foreigners, you bring me all your gadgets and whatever. He said, if you want to know what I think, he said, take a box of medicine. Not for me, but for people I would be meeting. I mean, that is, again, partly characteristic of Dr. Guru. Uh, for many years, I didn't see him. But when I came back from Sankwa Sabha, same time, I think, I think it's the same visit where, anyway, I came down to Kathmandu from Sankwa Sabha. Yes, and I was looking, I had the book because my first visit to Sankwa Sabha, I didn't have the book of Yogani. I only had my recordings on my tape recorder. And so I had this, and Dr. Gurung had traveled across Nepal. We're again talking about 1980. Very few people had moved around Nepal the way he did, by foot and through his, because he was a geographer, right? And so in his geographical uh, research, he moved around the country. So I thought if anybody knows what these texts are, he will know. I brought it from the East, I thought he'll know if, and he'll know the name Yog Yogmaya. And he opened this book and he, his eyes just lit up. He said, what? <laughs> He'd never heard of her. And mm -hmm. he again said something very characteristic of him. He said, you go back there, go back to work with these women, these Bhaktini. He, he treasured them as a valuable resource for research. He didn't say go and talk to this professor or that professor. He said, you go back there because he understood the, uh, the um, integrity of each place in Nepal has its own history, has its own language. And that the, if I was, if we were going to find out more, it would be there. And then he knew a man, he was a minister at that time, uh, Minister Bas Basnet, Basnet from Kulum. And he called him, he said, well, I don't know anything about Sankwa Saba, but let me ask this fellow minister, Basnet. And we sat with Minister Basnet at that time. And Basnet, who was about 60 at that time, I think he's no more, he, he, he started to talk about yoga maya. He said, yes. <clears throat> and he told us, which I quote in my book, he told us a few anecdotes about her. 
he said, I was a boy, but I remember her. And um, then again, Harka believed me. I mean, he believed my ability to do research. Mm. And again, he kept uh, uh, encouraging me to go back always to the field, always. He was a great person for the uh, respect of the local person. Um, uh, even though he was a writer and he was a professor or a, a doctor himself, PhD, uh, he uh, still uh, respected the on the ground research for his country because he's, he recognized that this was part of Nepali history and he valued that and he gave that to me also. Okay. What do you think? Did you know uh, him at all? No, uh, these two people uh, mentioned in your book, that's why I just, I do have some curiosity to know about much more about yes. from your mouth. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adhikari. And uh, thank you, Barbara, for your all reflective information. Now mm. we are by the end of our program. It's uh, Barbara, maybe you are already tired of giving answers to us. <laughs> so we have a few more questions, maybe at our Facebook posting. We will welcome, uh, I'm going to call Mr. Raju Sitola to read out some Facebook comments and questions, if any questions you, you like to answer. Uh, thank you, Vijayaji. Uh, I also had a few questions, but maybe we are running out of time. So maybe we have to keep that for next time. So I'm just going to read a few Facebook comments. Uh, there are some questions and there are some compliments. So I'm going to read that. Uh, maybe you can choose to answer you know, one or two of those. Uh, the first one is, uh, just give me a second. Uh, from Silas Pokhrel, Mr. Silas Pokhrel, uh, his question is, do you think there is a chance of Yogmaya and Durga Devi getting listed into compilation of notable global women, uh, good night stories for rebel girls? If yes, who should take initiation for that? Uh, from Silas Pokhrel. Uh, next question is from uh, Lal Tsonlagai. Uh, he's a secretary of Islander Scholar Chapter. Uh, are you satisfied with the ongoing development projects in the area related to Yogmaya? Uh, and there is a compliment from Rumila Nirdosi. I believe she is a chair of a Women Committee of INLS Center. Uh, she says, uh, amazing book. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Uh, and let me see. I don't know, for some reason, I can't see all the comments and questions. You know, it shows that, you know, we have more than that, but I can see only three of those. Uh, maybe, maybe you can copy them because I don't think the, if you can copy them uh, somehow, a photo, what do you call it? Screenshot or something. And I can, because the questions are useful for me, you know, mm -hmm. in later discussion or writing. Sure, I can do that for you. I mean, like a. But to address, uh, well, those are big questions. Right, that's um, what I was thinking. Maybe we're running out of the time. I think, so. in terms of these two women um, being entered into the history of women worldwide, I would like to see that. And maybe our group here could be part of somehow forming a core of Nepali notables and somehow developing a plan to provide, you know, the good night stories for, uh, good, for rebel girls. It's only one page, one page is an image and the other side of the book is about 300 words. And um, are you still there? Yes. I'm just trying and, to show you the actual Facebook post, uh, uh, page so that okay. you can read those questions. Okay, and uh, so all we need is like 300 words on each woman. And um, 
maybe you have some suggestions as to how we go about it. Um, because this, the book you mentioned uh, has new editions coming out. And so it's up to us. I don't think we need the government. It's up to Nepalis who care to approach the editors and say, look, here is uh, 300 words on each woman or 500, not, not more, and present it to them and press them. I saw when I was last in Kathmandu, there is a new book called something, it's a copy of the Goodnight Stories, which is a hundred international women. And this was from India and it has a hundred uh, Indian women. And I looked through it looking for Durga Devi or Yogmaya and their names are not there. So we can approach the Indian uh, publisher of that book to see if they'll include that, but you may not want to do that uh, given various factors. So maybe we should ask, um, maybe, yeah, again, if any of you, um, maybe uh, uh, Mrs. Nirdoshi uh, or any of you, you know, uh, in our group, if we could have, we only need about three people uh, I think Neelam Niharika uh, might join us and um, have a, a plan for that. It, it really is up to Nepali people, I think, to, to push this and maybe add another woman like Kasang Sherpa or something like that, you know? I mean, <laughs> these are not the only ones. So it's not just for these two. I mean, um, uh, Forget about the, I, maybe the president of Nepal might be in one of these international books, but um, so we can follow up on that. I'd be glad to. All right. Uh, so there's one more question I'm going to read. Uh, it's from Kiran Adhikari. He's a general secretary of uh, Island Scholar chapter. Uh, he write, uh, in your book, you have mentioned uh, Maya Angelis quote, you are enough. And also you have mentioned about remark of Santa Himire, co-founder of Yogmaya Memorial Foundation, Biratnagar. Nepal does not need people from beyond its border to define the direction our struggle. Could you please elaborate the context of these quote and remarks? That's a big question. I'd be glad to, but... Um, yeah. the, the, the first part of it was what? Uh, about the Maya Angelou's quote, uh, yeah, you know, it says right. that you are enough. Right. Yes. Um, I had a thought there that uh, slipped away, but um, you are enough. I mean, that that is, you don't need to go outside your society for models, for leaders. And uh, Nepal has a problem. A lot of a lot of Asian, a lot of countries have this problem of uh, uh, looking uh, outside for models. And you have all these NGO, uh, international NGOs, which uh, are projecting their own values and models. I mean, you see in America, we have a, a lot of problems when it comes to women and gender and black and so on and so forth. And who are we to guide Nepal. And uh, again, this is why we need models from our own society. I don't know if how many of you know, but I'm Arab origin. And both my parents were from Arab countries. And I grew up without any knowledge of my people or my language. I speak Tibetan, but hardly speak Arabic. And um, uh, again, my political awareness that I spoke about earlier also made me much more Arab nationalist, wanting to know my own culture. And I spent um, many years then uh, working in the Middle East and writing about the Middle East and feeling it's up to us to tell our own story. Uh, very, very important. And I know Nepali women are very much engaged in telling their stories and must do that. And, um, that's what Shanta Gimeri was talking about. 
And uh, uh, that is one organization, by the way, which is not politicized, which is the Biratnagar group of the Yogamaya Foundation in Biratnagar. And they are in the name of Yogamaya doing local work. So I think, again, those are very big questions, but I think um, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we are done with the Facebook comments and uh, questions. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Well, thank you all for being with me and also very, very uh, um, provocative, not provocative, but useful questions for me to think about. Um, yeah, thank, thank you, Barbara. I don't know how much more writing I'll do, but I want to make a, a, a strong case for uh, uh, Durga Devi. Uh, by the way, I have translated, I've had, I've had the biography of her in my book translated now into Nepali. And so at a later stage, I hope we will have other people contributing to that because I don't want it to be my book alone, my story. I want to see other people uh, doing the research. And so thank you for the encouragement to uh, work with others to uh, produce Nepali language. Oh yes, there is one thing. There is a young woman uh, in Nepal. Her last name is Giri. I forget her first name, but she has announced a children's book on Yogmaya. That is a big leap forward. And I think we'll see that in the next few months. It'll be an illustrated children's book uh, on Yogmaya. Oh, wonderful to hear about that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that the Maya Giri? Her last name is Giri, uh, Ambika, maybe. Ambika. She's, she, has pub, she has written other books about, for children. Mm. And uh, I can, uh, I can uh, find out more about that and pass that to uh, Raju, okay, when we know. Yeah. Thank That'll you so much. Out soon. I think yeah. it's, I don't know if it's in Nepali or English, maybe both languages. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara, for responding to the Facebook audiences as well. So now, uh, now we are at the end of the program. So I would like to invite uh, Mr. Raju Sitola, the president of INLS Colorado chapter, to speak a few words of, um, for the closing. Uh, thank you, Bijaji. Uh, even though INLS Colorado chapter had organized some book launch programs in the past, we had not organized any program focused only on the book. This is our first attempt. So I request with everyone to forgive us for any mistake we have made and give us your feedback so that we can improve next time. I like to wholeheartedly thank Dr. Barbara Nimri Ajit for providing us opportunity to organize this program. Uh, the paperback version of Yogmaya and Durga Devi, Rebel Woman of Nepal, became available in the U.S. last Thursday only. So this program is actually a launch program of the book in the U.S. Uh, I have not read the whole book, but the few chapters, mm -hmm. and I think this is a great book, which will help to bring back our lost historic heroes, Yogmaya and Durga Devi, to general public attention. Now the book is available both in Kindle version and paperback in Amazon. I request everyone to purchase and read the book. Actually, let me uh, show you the screen uh, share of the Amazon where you can find the book. I love this book, book cover. A friend of mine uh, an eminent artist. She's based in Paris, but she's an Arab uh, artist. And she allowed me to use her uh, painting as a book cover. So, you know, now you can see that, you know, this is an Amazon, you know, you can buy either the Kindle version or paperback version. Uh, the price is $23 for paperback and Kindle you know, $14.99. Uh, yeah, I already got my Kindle version, so. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
One one other note, uh, there is a new ebook publisher in Kathmandu called tupra.com, T-H-U-P-R-A-I.com, which I learned about from actually from Neelam Niharika, and they are apparently a reliable, secure ebook, and they have also taken up the ebook edition in Nepal. And it's just good to know, you know, that they are producing ebooks in Nepal. Uh, thank you for that information, Barbara. Uh, I also like to thank Neelam Karki Niharika for joining us. She joined us briefly and then she left. Uh, and I wish her all the best for her upcoming book, Draupadi Abhases, and hope that we will be able to uh, organize similar book talk program for that book as well. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Narayan Sestra, I am the trustee member and, and he has to also leave earlier. And I'd like to thank Tharma Sestra, uh, Vice President of uh, General Sampar Samiti, uh, Central Committee of USA for their valuable time. Uh, I thank uh, Padam Vishwakarma, uh, Vice President of INS Board of Trustees, uh, Dr. Vijaya Sarma, uh, actually he is now uh, advisor of INS Scholar Chapter, uh, Ramesh Kuring, uh, he is also advisor of INS Scholar Chapter. And uh, uh, then I'd like to thank uh, executives and board members of INS Scholar Chapter. Uh, they deserve uh, appreciation for their effort to make this program successful. And special thanks go to Vijaya Dakal, who successfully hosted this program, and Salis Pokhrel for his technical help and brtnepal.com for live streaming of this program. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. I hope to meet you when I come to Colorado. Yeah. You're most welcome. Sure, sure, Barbara. Um, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Barbara. Good to see you. Hello everybody, this is me on Moikesi and you're watching BRTNepal.com.